Okay, first of all, let me share on the Zoom chat room the link to the collaborative notes. As a reminder, these notes will be published to GitHub. They can still be updated, but they won't be the same collaborative. Let me share my screen on the notes and let's get started. Can you see my screen and can you read it? Yes. Okay, let's get started. So welcome everyone to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 18th of January, 2022. Um, so Mark, Stefan, Hervé and I are present today. Uh, let's start with announcement, if any. Um, last week, uh, the security release that happened last week uh, during the Wednesday, so the day after previous uh, team meeting, everything went very well on the open source. So we are, for the rest, I don't know. Uh, we were able to release in the, in the timestamp uh, uh, LTS, one LTS, one weekly, and more than 20 plugins. So thanks everyone involved on in that process directly, indirectly. Thanks for the support. That was a, quite a success. Um, even though just for later, a reminder is that we, we had a weekly that was triggered the day before accidentally. Uh, because we all we all have been bitten by the fact that weekly are triggered automatically each week. And if we disable a job on the UI, um, the automatic system might override that part. We need to find a solution. There is an issue on the Jenkins Infra release process for that. So next time we should have a solution. So anyone with ideas and ready to implement, let's go for that. Um, we can speak about that later, but that's a reminder. Next time we have to be careful on that part. It's not enough to disable the job. We are multiple culprits, so no problem. No one has to apologize. The security team is aware of that. Um, they know that there isn't someone that messed up. It's just the team did not uh, has been beaten that things happen. So let's improve together. Um, we do, there is a weekly that should happen today. Uh, I haven't checked the status yet. It might break because we've uh, I've merged with the help of team yesterday some ch fundamental changes on the pipeline that run this release and packaging. And there might be, a, let's say, punctual weekly between today and next week. They might have some weekly because if we see too much rate or too much changes, we want to trigger intermediate weekly to validate the new process changes that might have been uh, introduced in the meantime. Are there other announcements? Okay, um, before we go, I need someone to drive the meeting next week because I should be in day off. So I won't be able to run and prepare the meeting. Who's gonna volunteer for that? We can share the, you can share the, the burden between uh, multiple persons. We'll flip a coin later. <laughs> I can Someone do has, it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay, is there a other announcement? Someone has something to say about announcement. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, first, a few minor subjects that we delayed during the, the past week because of all the activity. Um, repo CI Jenkins.org uh, have a certificate that was expected to be um, to be valid until March this year. Thanks a lot, Kosuke, for dealing with GFrog. It took time to generate the required elements and send a, a new certificate with its key and encrypted to GFrog. They updated successfully immediately. Uh, so everything went well. No 
no service outage. And now the new certificate is in place on the repo CI Jenkins attack. So thanks, Kosuke. Uh, we've added uh, on the team calendar, which is brand, brand new, uh, less than one year old. We have added an event three months before the end of next uh, certificates. So someone else will be able to take over. And uh, the event on the calendar has the link to the Google group with instruction. So the next person in charge of that will be able to find the history and know how to do, to do that and what we should provide to GFROG support next time. So thanks again for everyone involved in that part, Mark, Kosuke, and Olivier, I think. Um, next topic is Netlify. So thanks, Gavin. Gavin worked uh, during the past week and during the Christmas holidays, at least on the European American area. Uh, integration and partnership started with Netlify. We have an open source account uh, and we are able to provide uh, website preview for Jenkins.io, plugins Jenkins.io, and I think a third one, any of our static websites. So we use Netlify before for status. We still need to migrate status to this new. But that allows us to provide on each pull request automatically Netlify generate the website and add a link directly into the pull request. So the author right. and reviewer of a pull request can click and see what the website will look like if that pull request will be merged, which is a really a awesome. nice improvement. So, so, so Damien, you said that we still need to migrate status.jenkins.io to the open source account. Did I get that correct? Yes. Okay, Correct. thank you. Uh, I don't think there is an, an issue, so I, uh, we have to write one. Status Jenkins IO was already hosted on Netlify in production and running uh, the preview sites, the native one, Netlify, um, but it was under Olivier account. And now oh. that we have negotiated an open source account with multiple administrators, well, uh, before that, we were only able to use one admin. Migrating the website to, to the multi-administrator will make sense and will avoid uh, any bad surprise to Olivier Bank account if we start uh, having some bad ways of statistics. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, uh, just a note. Um, Gavin did a hard work on providing safe uh, mechanism uh, to ensure that this deployment preview happens and everything is run from infra CI. So he took care of using the native GitHub deployment object, which provide a advanced check that maps to deployments that allows to say that commit is deployed at that place. If we, you add commit on the pull request, you have new deployment, etc. And also, the website is not built by Netlify. The website is built by InfraCI. And there is a specific set of actions, uh, libraries, pipeline libraries. I don't know the details of implementation, but these elements ensure that the website is pushed by a Netlify command line directly to Netlify. The reason behind that is we are limited in amount of minutes of build on Netlify CI. We have a lot of free, but given the high activity on these websites in terms of contribution, we will completely burn these free credits. So instead, if I understand correctly, Gavin implemented something that we build on our own machine that we pay for, and we use the Netlify preview that provide unlimited preview for free. Um, he worked hard on the safety of that system, meaning, for instance, on Jenkins.io, an external contributor will see a CI build that will take care of building the website on CI Jenkins.io. So you have a feedback as contributor that is available publicly. And in parallel, InfraCI also trigger a build only for the deployment part. So it builds a copy of the site on its own and deploy it, and then commit back, uh, add the command to the pull request. So, so Damien, just to be sure I've understood, so there is 
now an infra.ci component for the www.jenkins.io site that really wasn't there pre or or Correct. it's a new component that was not there before specifically in, in doing these deployments so they're not we don't have the credentials for netlify deployments in ci.jenkins.io he successfully exactly. avoided putting those sensitive or the relatively sensitive credentials in there exactly okay excellent thank you so I will, uh, though it has impact on infra CI, I will talk about that on a subsequent task on the task list today. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's the idea. So Gavin and team did a really huge work on that part. So that's really nice. And the improvement for the contributor is huge. Are there any questions about Netlify? Okay. A uh, quick one, rating Jenkins IO. So it was reported a few weeks ago that there were some Apache uh, tokens appearing on the page on different services, including rating Jenkins IO. So uh, Hervé started the work and then finished it uh, with the holidays. So now we can say that rating Jenkins IO is not publishing. Uh, you don't know if it's Apache directly by the web page or headers, you don't have the version and you don't know the operating system. It's a minor thing, but still applied. And it was a good opportunity to automate, uh, thanks to Hervé's work of all the Docker images are now automatically built and rebuilt. Now we took the opportunity to add automating um, update people request for production deployment. So each time you have a new version of the image for rating, now in the next day you will have a pull request open that say hey there is a new version of the container blah 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 would you want to deploy it that one was missing good job okay if there isn't any question we can move to digital ocean oh by the way rating jenkins io i'm almost sure there is an issue um the idea will be to migrate that service on Kubernetes because it's running on a standalone virtual machine right now, which make low value. Uh, so that could be a nice topic for uh, Hervé or Stefan in the upcoming months. It's just, uh, there is no priority on that, but that's something to have in mind. Um, next topic, digital ocean. Hervé, mic is yours. Yes, um, so I started, uh, uh, I tried the DigitalOcean, the telephone provider, and uh, started to experiment with it. Um, I've, uh, I will use it to create a new cluster on it, and we'll, uh, we will use it as, as a, a complementary agent for uh, CI.jenkins.io. Uh, we intend to run this as an experiment uh, for three months to see uh, the easy associated uh, cost and the alter other alternatives, the part two, uh, uh, could be uh, could uh, would be to to add a new uh, agent uh, as a digital assent uh, VM VM. It's not started yet. Uh, we could uh, do it, uh, do these two parts uh, simultaneously or one after the other. It's not uh, decided yet. So as a reminder, the costs we're speaking here on Kubernetes are not directly related to the cost of infrastructure, it's only human and technical costs because we have to change all the time, all the images to not use Kubernetes pattern, but use what the Jenkins Kubernetes agent plugin expects from the way you use it. So single container pod because uh, there are issues in the implementation, etc. There are public Jira issues about that topic, but that cost us some effort that we uh, that gave in publicly question for good reasons, because if we have to build all-in-one images, 
that take almost the yeah. same amount of time to get started than a virtual machine, then maybe getting virtual machine could be better. Um, they will be on private and isolated kernels. They will allow us to not fear running Docker on these agents compared to, to pods. We have a bunch of virtual machine provider everywhere. It's just that we need one plugin for each cloud provider on Jenkins compared to Kubernetes, that's one single plugin. Right, but that that Docker and Docker thing is, or being able to run Docker on a virtual machine is seems attractive to me. Uh, yes, so that's a balance. I don't have absolute answer, but Gavin poked us for good reason that I think is right, even if it frustrated me on the because we were working on Kubernetes in some times. The reality is we have to question that or or improve the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin as a community because there are a lot of users that start complaining about these weaknesses. So yeah, that's time to question it or to question the, uh, we are the first users, we are a kind of quality before it's widely adopted. And right now what we are suffering for sure, we are not only to use the, that plugin. So that's really something to push to the, let's say cloud native relative subject and maybe uh, to other part of the community. I'm not sure where, where will be the good start on that part because I think there some help is needed to improve that plugin. Thanks, Hervé. Uh, as a reminder, that's part of the partnership with Digital Ocean. We have limited credits on that area. And um, we will have to write down a blog post once we will have started after one month of operation that should be a good uh, good start. We can co-author the thing, but they asked us to do this. And we might want to put some logo somewhere, but don't worry, Gavin will poke us when needed. One of the goals here is that if we start using that credits and it works very well and Digital Ocean is happy, after one or two months, we'll be able to, to negotiate with them if we need more. So that's a great way to, to decrease our cost. And, and the blog post is on, on how we use it? Yes, exactly. OK. The goal for Digital Ocean is to have users that are not part of the website telling them, hey, Digital Ocean is a nice platform because nya, nya, nya. And it's also a way yeah. for them to get feedbacks, honest feedbacks on real life use cases. It's, it's completely fair, yeah. Yes, especially they give us for free missions. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean that's fair. That's fair. We try and we 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 say, yeah. Is there any other question or points about digital recent topic? No. no, just that the Jenkins.io site does not yet have their logo on it, and we we may want to change the layout to admit that there are now different tiers of sponsors. Right now, they're all a bunch of sponsors are listed as free and open source licensing programs, where in fact, their sponsorship, uh, many of them isn't about licensing, it's about capacity, Netlify. And so, so we've got, we got some wording improvements to do on the Jenkins.io site. Good point. So we have to keep that in mind. Thanks, Mark. Next topic, Stefan, do you feel to present it yourself or do you want me to give a summary? I'm, I'm, I'm sure you will do a better job. I'm not sure, okay. Um, Stefan is working as his first major task on the infrastructure to build uh, all the Docker images that we have on CI Jenkins IO uh, into a single image that will have exactly the same tooling as the virtual machine templates. As a reminder, the goal is developers shouldn't care whether they run their workload on CI Jenkins IO on a virtual machine or a container, which means container will need to have the free GDKs, the same version of GitHub, and all the tooling, um, except for the Docker engine running. For all the rest, it's totally possible to have that one big images. That will follow the principle we saw about Kubernetes pods. And so the work of uh, Stefan is to use Packer to build these Docker images, to have the same scripts that we use for virtual machines, 
and the consequence will be we should drop the Docker inbound agents repository that builds with Docker file. We should not need that one on Jenkins Infra. Reminder, only Jenkins Infra. Right now, the work is almost finished for being able to build the Docker image. So uh, Stefan uh, did all the heavy lifting behind. Next step will be deploying these images and we can start using it. And we have delayed the work for the Windows containers because multiple issues and the goal was to deliver as quick as possible already the Linux because it has value and then we can delay on Windows. So, so Damien, for clarity, then these, it's a Packer image that's constructing a Docker container, or is it a Packer image that's constructing a virtual machine? Both. Both. Packer. I see. Okay. Thank you. Packer builds all the combination. It's a, at the same time, it builds an Ubuntu image on Amazon as a, for virtual machines, on Azure for virtual machines, and on a local Docker engine for Docker images. and install Docker in the virtual machine. So if there are no other question, next topic about release process. Um, on the past weeks between the security release um, uh, and the Kubernetes issues, uh, there were some changes required and some changes to start discussing about on the release process for Jenkins, the one we run on weeklies and LTS. First one, we have merged yesterday, uh, the one release per pod, not one container per pod for the, the whole release process. We already did before security release the pa Linux packaging section. Now it's also released, so we'll prove that it worked today. Um, I've personally delayed the Windows packaging process because uh, see next one of the next bullets. So we should be able to do it next week. The goal is to just to apply the Kubernetes Jenkins plugin practi recommended practices and avoid the timeout during releases. There is upcoming modernization of the contents. So at least using the GDK 11 to compile the, war, the final war and release Jenkins with that version of Java. Um, and finally, Windows packaging. So right now, to generate the Jenkins MSI from the Jenkins war, it's only a one-step packaging. Uh, we are downloading 15 gigabytes of Docker image on the Windows server uh, Docker container system. That's half of the time spent on a release, which both the security people and usual release people are not really happy about this. That means we should be able to have, a, to decrease uh, twice the time for a release if we can solve that issue. Because for sure, we don't need the whole 15 gigabytes. So we have to work on that part. There are different paths, uh, installing on need the required tools, etc. but there is some work to be done here for sure. Um, about that, thanks Basil. Basil Crow started on the Jenkins CI packaging. That's a Jenkins CI repository that hosts the make file that define all from a Jenkins war file. You can build a Debian package, a SUS package, a Red Hat package, or the MSI package. That logic is not on Jenkins Infra, which means the Jenkins Infra release and the Docker images we are building on Infra are only to reproduce that process. But that process should be tested already on CI Jenkins IO before. So Basil did a really huge work and I think it's not finished yet, but there are much steps. But the goal is that we should have at least once per day, a full build of a war that should validate that we can run. And um, I wonder, that's a personal proposal, if we shouldn't move all the dependency logic that say you need um, the tools to build RPM, you need the tool to build Debian package, you need a weak tool set to build MSI, all this logic should be available to developer on that repository. And our work on release and Docker packaging should be only specific to our release process. 
meaning GPG agent, inbound agent, but only tools specific to the infra. That should help the developer experience to avoid the egg and chicken problem like we have today, which make the documentation hard to write. So let's let's get uh, let's get tuned on that subject. Finally, there is a subject I will want to start. We won't discuss it now. I think um, I propose a discussion topic on this course that will be stop using branches on the release repository. The call will be one branch, one pipeline, one set of pod or agent definition. And then each Jenkins line that are multi-branch and that, that's not the topic, each line will be one file or set of parameters. So that the... change, sorry, oh. go ahead. No. Um, that change would have impact on the release process and the security procedures and the way uh, we build and release Jenkins. So that's why discussion is needed before acting because there might be some consequences that we haven't foreseen. So that's why I prefer asking the question before discussing um, and see. But the value of that will be we, we wouldn't have to transplant and cherry pick each change to old stable. And we will only have one process that we can run regularly and be confident with. So so the, the safety check I think we need there is we need to understand one of, one of the security team's strong requests that we do not have is the ability to, I believe it's stage or package a, uh, a release in a staged fashion. So we can't, we can't generate a deb file or an RPM or an MSI that isn't published immediately and visible. Do I, do I understand that correctly? Yes, that's also one of the high value of this. It's the ones we yes. have simplified that process, it will be an enabler for being able to stage release before the real release dates. Got it, right. And so we today, we the, the tooling does know how to stage the Jenkins war file before release, but it can't do the packaging. And that creates this critical path, long, long lead time thing of building the Docker images takes a long time, building the MSI, building, et cetera. Okay, thanks, Damien. Okay, um, one last important topic is that uh, it's been, so the 13th of January, yesterday and today, we saw gfrog um, repo.jenkins-ci.org download slowness. There is an issue that has been open on our new LDesk uh, by end user. Um, the consequence for end user is that every build of a Jenkins plugin that require an artifact from repo Jenkins CI is terribly slow, uh, like less than five kilobytes per second in download when you are lucky. Um, let me find the issue. I have it, I have it. I'm... Okay, thanks. So we have uh, asked GFrog support for feedbacks to them sometimes. They ask us for uh, more details because I think they are running blind with our initial requests. So Ervin, I worked on an answer earlier today. So we gave them proof, we gave them reproducibility, and we gave them the metric because not only the download that's slow on CI Jenkins IO, it fails the builds because uh, we reached the one hour timeout for builds that should take five or 10 minutes. It's easily reproducible on a local machine. When you start to see these errors, you run a Maven clean compile on your machine after cleaning up your local Maven artifact repo and it tried to download. Uh, we were able to reproduce on a bunch of different ISPs. So that's not a problem specific to CI Jenkins IO. We gave them metrics. There is a ping and point that our page or duty is monitoring. And the, ans the response time is between six and eight seconds when that down slow download happens. So then there's something on the infrastructure. Uh, I think that's Jesse Glick that asked the question to, let's say, uh, leverage the impact of this, at least on the CI Jenkins IO area, will be to, um, Think again about a service that will be an artifact caching system on our build system that could be used. 
So that will be, uh, let's say, uh, it was, a, if I understand correctly, it was a kind of Nginx proxy. We have to configure our builds to use it. And if you use it, then that system act as a man in the middle. If it has the local cache file, then it serves it locally, which is quite performant. And if it doesn't, then it asks it directly to a GFrog system. So at least when the, that kind of incident happen, which is not that frequent, but still annoying, at least the builds on CI Jenkins IO wouldn't be that slow, unless you had a new dependency, of course. So let's wait for GFrog and depending on their answer or their ability to solve or not solve the issue, then we can start a topic on that area or not. Are there any other questions on that topic? So we have reached the 30 minutes of the meeting. Uh, so I propose that we delay the other subject uh, to next week. Ah, uh, yeah, because you're not here. Don't worry, you will have plenty of work. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other question or important topic to treat before we stop that uh, we could have forgotten? Just that we've got to be sure we do the safety checks for the weekly release that you mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. there were there were changes in the release in the scripts, right? And so detailed checks. I'll start those here shortly. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a release checklist that I run for weeklies to see that they're healthy. Okay. Um, if it's okay, and let's do this, uh, the two of us, unless someone is interested. Oh, or at okay. least I will be available if you have, a, if you see anything on the list check that we can fix and iterate. Yeah, I was just going to raise the questions in the Jenkins release IRC channel and we can talk there as a way to, to discuss it. Is that okay, Damien, or would you prefer to, that's to okay. care? Okay. No, that's okay. Let's start the discussion. And by default, if no one is available, happy to pair. Great. All right. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You very much. Have Thanks. a good enough day.